And it's now on to the right side. He plays it to number six. And he's on the right flank here now. Isaiah Dar um, Farrell. He beats one. He swings it in. And is he going to have a spank? He does. Wonderful defending by the Arima Kings defender. And now Carnage Pirates having some sort of possession. One of the bunks it around. Get a feel of the ball. That's what any coach will be telling his players. And just not on the right page there. Unfortunately. Tries to play it forward, but easy read another football. Yeah, actually, that's a mistake. And wonderful quick foot ability there by the number 12. And that was an infringement there. And the Arima Kings finally having some possession of the ball. And Isaiah Ramnarine had some difficulty read, judging the spin of the ball there, and it goes out for Karnas, Turing. Isaiah Farrell. I think the referee, Johnson Thomas, saw something there, and he pulled it back. But Pharrell finally has it now. He has it now. He has support on the right flank. He goes inside. Is that onside? Yes, it is. Just on the long side there. The number 11, Kendall, has been on the ball a lot. Has been threatening the Arima Kings defense. No team really has have gotten a grip on the game. No team really has done anything influential thus far. Nothing to penetrate. I think it's these first stages at the first 10 minutes is a bit of a chess match. A lot of teams canceling out each other. A lot of players breaking down. And some silly mistakes in terms of passing. But that doesn't mean the football is going to get better. I predict it is. Everybody does get on the feel of the ball. All the way on the other side, Kyle Andrews. I think he's gonna, is he gonna go into the box or is he gonna trade short? He does trade short. Kyle Andrews, the left back. And now Ari McKings with a throw in. Arima King's finally having it now. And is he going to play a true ball? But I think it's easily read there by Kyle Andrews. And Levi Axon for it on the right flank. He cuts inside now. Isaiah Farrell. And now Levi finally gets it now. Now back to Farrell. They have had a lot of the ball in this first half. Isaiah Price getting a feel of it in the midfield. And now we are all the way on the left flank. And is he going to swing it in? Yes, he does. But well, I didn't think he got around the ball well enough there. The number 16, Curtis Noel. I think Arima Kings need to get a little bit of their goal scorer. The last goal scorer against the McCoy Tigers. My street needs to get on the ball a bit more if Arima Kings... Wants to see anything out of this game. And well, obviously, Ricardo Butler, he's the man to watch.
The energy is electric here in the Marvin Lee. Wonderful interception and clearance by the center back for the Arima Kings, Tyler Lopez. Wonderful tackle there by Junior Maron. He's on it again now. And there's an overlap and run. Is he going to play him? He should play him. Oh, he doesn't. The number 17 he goes on the other side. Brandon Olton. And puts Carnage on a little bit of pressure. But Kyle Andrews read it well. Kyle Andrews again on it now. And that's a brilliant true ball. Is it going to be dangerous? No, it isn't. Wonderful gobble up there by the center back pair, Isaiah Lo Daniel and Tyler Lopez. They've been playing well. They've been reading the play. Carnage. Carnage definitely has been knocking on the door thus far. And now Maishi finally on it. He's the one, I think. It's going to be beautiful. He tries to play a true ball there. The number. Isaiah Ramlarine. Actually, that's Junior Maron. My pardons. Just didn't, wasn't on the same page for the rest of his players. On a different chapter, actually. This man has been getting a chance to flank her, but wonderful reading of the play. Straight to the goalkeeper. A little bit disappointing by the swing there from the left back. Straight to Christopher Hernandez's hands. And now we have Maestri. He has, he has, oh, lost out on it there. Levi. Still on it here. Kendall tries to play it back to the number 16. Curtis Noel. And I think they got a corner out of this. Or throwing. Is he going to have a shot? Yes, he does. Well, what a save there. Straight down the throat of Christopher Hernandez. Any other side. I think we might have seen a spectacular save. Or he might not have even seen a goal, actually. But this is Group B action. Oh, this is very dangerous for the Arima Kings. Too dangerous for my liking. And that's a wonderful distribution. And now we have Isaiah Mramnai. He plays a long ball on the right flank to Brandon Olton. Is that a foul? Referee says no play on. Again, Isaiah Mramnai. Oh, that's a harsh challenge. That's he was flattened there by that tackle. Fortunate not to see a card. Those things I like to see from referees, they're not immediate to hand out and dish out cards. Because once you're on a yellow card, you know you have to be on your P's and Q's on fourth. But the Maestri sends it in. Maestri the Maestro here. Wonderful hold up play, and he has. That wasn't well taught out there by the number 10, Remy Butler. He did well to hold off the rest of the teammates, but the pass back to the goalkeeper was, was disappointing. And I think everyone in the Marvin Lee Stadium expected better of him.
That was a bit peculiar there, a, a foul throw. At this professional level, you don't see often, often you don't see those kinds of infringements. Arima Kings haven't had much possession in the opposition half, and these things is why this is very dangerous. Is he going to let it go? What a block. Wonderful block there by Dylan Kelly. And now the play is being built in, in the tune with the rhythm section. And Isaiah Farrell has been playing well thus far. Plays it to Kendall who has seen a lot of it. But then set. Griffith Swear came in and declared it. I must mention me. I know Seth Griffith personally. I've been fortunate to play with him in Trinity Colleges. Very nefty player. Skillful as well. Always knows what he's doing. Miss Annie, Annie interrupts it there again. Wonderful football. Brandon Olton and, and Junior Maron having a bong and a tiki taka there, but Junior Maron asking for, for his player to run forward there. My shoe would be a little bit disappointed that he wasn't able to keep possession. The defender nicked it off him. And Isaiah Ramler Ryan has been at it defensively in this first half. Sliding challenge. The game, I must say, is still ping pong in a bang. No team really has been getting any proper grasp on it, on the ball. We're just 15 minutes into the first half, nil nil in the Marvin Lee. Like I mentioned before, this is Group B. McCoy Tigers, Karnas Pirates, and Arima Kings. Arima Kings losing to McCoy Tigers 2-1. So they will be looking to punks back. They will be looking to grab a victory so that they can score some points on the board. And Christopher Hernandez distributes it to the right flank. He has a wonderful run by Maestri the Maestro. And wonderful reading of the play by Kyle Andrews. Intercepted it well and played it out so that his team could regroup. The Karanaj Pirates and so they do. That was really not well thought of and it wasn't the pass and now his team is under pressure. And now we have the number seven, Darius John. With a couple of step overs a cut back. And is he going to, oh, I think he did a bit too much. And he plays it all the way back to his, his left back for support and cast. And he swings it in. Wonderful header out. By the center back. And Brandon Olton plays it to Isaiah Ramrine. He has been playing well so far. Oh. Ten time is run there well, Luis Rodriguez. And Maestri the Maestro pulling some pressure. But Karnas Pirates kept it. Levi. Thus far, he has started off well. I must say, the number 12. Oh, is this going to be the first goal? Yes, it is. Darius Johnny has had that quick foot ability. He has had that extra touch over his defenders 
And his left foot was the reason why he banged it against the Christopher Hernandez and the entire Rima Kings 1-0 here to the Karnas Pirates. And as we pull up the replay, wonderful long ball again by the number six who has been a lot in the game. And look at that. Bang! No way Christopher Hernandez was stopping that. So that's brilliant playing my boat. Isaiah Farrell, who I mentioned him multiple times in this first half. And well, Darius John, he isn't going to miss from there. That goal has definitely brought some spark into the rhythm section. And the Arima Kings will be disappointed because they are, have lost their first game and now they are down again. Let's see what Clint, the coach, can do to bring back his side so that they can be, have some sort of threat here in the GA Super Cup in their group B fixtures. And now, ooh, just on the long side. And we have Dylan and Junior Maron. And he has actually got it back here now, the Carnage Pirates. And Isaiah Farrell, who was the reason for the ball inside the box for Darius to score. And Darius in it, and the goal scorer on it again. And what a beautiful ball to leave I series. And he just lost his footing at the, the most vital moment. To the surprise of everyone here in the Marvin Lee. I think he should have kept his footing there. Not 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 nothing really was biting at his foot, so I'm not sure why he went over. Bit disappointing for Levi. But Arima Kings now with the Maestro the Maestro. He's on it. He's such a playmaker. Has a lot to do for his side. He, he and Remy Butler should be the reason or should be the players who Arima Kings is looking for to make a difference. Isaiah Farrell with a long ball to Darius, but it didn't even reach him. And Junior Maron, he swings it and distributes it all the way on another on the right flank to the right back. And Luis Rodriguez, the striker, just had a long touch there. He's nibbling it, nibbling it at the Carnage Pirates defense. And he's the one leading the defense, I should say, for the Arima Kings. Oh. And obviously, spearheading the attack. Levi trying to sneak a run forward. Arima Kings isn't high pressing like the Carnage Pirates. They, they're a bit in the middle of the pitch and staying compact. And asking for the Carnage Pirates to beat this defensive wall. But this gives the Carnage Pirates a lot of possession. Isaiah Ferrell with a what a heavy touch there. And Seth Gifford goes forward. Is he going to give it to Seth Gifford? Finally has had a touch. Remy Butler, but his distribution wasn't the best. That one. And he has a spank there. Right winger. Can't see his number from here. Can't make out actually who it is. I think it's in I think it's in number 10 actually, Ricardo Butler. Having a spank then. 
the distribution as well. Is he going to reach it here, Ricardo Butler? Ooh, it, surprisingly, he didn't get to beat Isaiah Farrell. He has been strong. Isaiah has been similar to the walls of Jericho. Isaiah, difficult to beat. Carnage on it again now. Ironic, the two number 10s has the same last name, Butler. Remy Butler and Ricardo Butler, that is. Ricardo Peltier, I should say. And is he going to have a spanky? Ooh, I think that wasn't the right decision. I think he should have let go the throttle there. I think he should have had a fire there of a shot. Test the goalkeeper, at least. Not a bad decision to cut it back inside, but none, none of his teammates was there to assist. And Kyle Andrews with a long distribution forward, long kick forward. And Luis Rodriguez finally has had a touch. His touch was just out of his reach and he lost out on the ball there. And the my street committing a foul on his teammate on, on the opposition, I should say. We are 25, 26 minutes in the first half. And it's 1-0 to the Carnage Pirates. Good to see Darius John. Isaiah Price. Now there's some time and space for. Wonderful defending, I must say. Beautiful defending. Actually, from Andrews. Isaiah Farrell. He has Levi. And he has Ricardo. Maestri. Finally. Oh, I think that was too early. Could have hold it up a bit. Now Kendall. He could play it long. He decides not to. Now all the way to Ricardo. Ricardo beats two. Is he going to beat three? Yes, he beats three. And the referee has to blow for that one. The speed of Ricardo Peltier is definitely... You saying both like I, I I could say. That extra gas is always wonderful to see. An amazing sight. And he run past about three defenders there with the first touch. I mean, this is not I mean, he did something spectacular, but it may be to I hope it's not something, anything serious, and he just wind it. You know, when you get hit in the stomach, they recommend you stay down for a bit, let the pain go away. But I think he'll be okay. They have a free kick right on top, closer to the corner flag, and he. Dips it in. Christopher came out and he missed it. Surprise. That was the end product. And now Isaiah Price. In the midfield. Good turn by Darius John. Ah, he just missed out on capitalizing. And a good chance if he turned that one well. He gives away the possession to the Arima Kings. Now the cent center back, Seth Griffith. Wonderful distribution and out. My shit, my on it now. Back to Seth Griffith. Seth Griffith distributes. 
All the way across to Isaiah Ramnarine. He has Butler and he swings it in. Butler now on it. But eventually, the ball was cleared. And Isaiah Ramnarine has another throw in. Plays it now to Junior Maron. And they go back to Daniel Sylvester. Back to Maron. Now to Dylan Kelly, centre back. And to, to the captain, Christopher. It's a beautiful distribution by the centre back. And Arima Kings having a little bit of a feel of it. But they lost that on it. And Darius John, he's on the right side. And they play a true ball to him. Is this the second one? Is he going to score the last post? Yes, he does. And this is very easy for Darius John. He's, he's gobbling that at. He's going to eat that every day. One mistake from the, from the guys in orange. And look at that. He kept him on side. He tried to run back to keep him on side, but that was to no avail. And he slotted it last post. Easy does it for Darius John. And he's already on a hat trick. And it's only about. 31 minutes that has played thus far. And Carnage Pirates in cruise control. If I was Arima Kings, I would have been going back to the drawing board offensively. If I want to get a scruff out of anything in this game. And if I was Carnage Pirates, I would have Continue doing what I'm doing. High press. Put some pressure on Yerima Kings. Because that's working out. My the Maisha trying to create something for his side. Because they need that. Levi series on it now. Oh. Referee spotted something wrong. And he gives on a free kick to the Yerima Kings, I think. Curtis Noel was a bit. Rash there with the challenge. Seth Griffith. Sway a bit, a bit winded. But he's back on his feet. But yes, I must say, this is easy pickings for the Karanized Pirates, being two up. They have kept it, they have bounced it, they have moved it around, and so likely, they are on top, and deservedly so. But Ricardo Butler, could he do something special? Butler, he beats one, he beats two. But, oh, that's a fall. It has to be a fall, and it's, it should be cardable for me. Actually, the referee says, get up. It's not a foul. I, I'm surprised the referee didn't blow. He had no reason to go down. I think he was mashed at the back of his heel. I'm surprised the referee didn't blow for that. I would have been upset. How is that not a foul? Everyone on the bench would have been questioning John St Stone Thomas. There is a yellow card being dished out. Maestri, I think he was complaining to the referee about the foul there. I am all in shock as to why it wasn't blown. I, I mean, I understand why players will be upset, but you shouldn't. I think he said something to the referee that would have caused him to give it a, a, a yellow card. Oh, it's beautiful there by you. Ricardo Peltier. Fortune for number 16 of the Arima Kings, 
Back to Pharrell. Flick in by Kendall, and now he's back on it now, Kendall. Is he going to take on his lad? He turns on the inside and turns again and still has it here, Kendall. No, he lost out. And Arima Kings has been awarded it. And Mike Street, Maestro, plays it back to Seth, and Seth clears it to Louise. A slash there by Curtis Noel, I think unnecessary. Tries to turn it on the inside there, but Junior Maron read it. And to Butler. To Isaiah. But Pharrell now read it, and he plays it now to Darius John. He's on a, on a hat trick. This is Andrew, sorry. My, my pardons from the commentary box. And Pharrell tries to swing it. And is that offside? It's onside, actually. Straight to Darius. It it let its way and the referee blows for an infringement. But the boys in green has been able to bounce it around, has been able to get a grasp on the game, the likes of Ricardo Peltier, Isaiah Farrell, and Levi has had a lot of the ball and they have had or have been able to stamp their foot on this game. And here's another chance now. But Dylan snuffed it out and cleared it. And look at the high press. They immediately get it in the opposition's half here. <coughs> and Ricardo, he swings it in. Darius isn't going to finish his hat trick. He has time and space and he has a shot. That went. That one went into the, into the car park. High, wide, and not too handsome. Junior Maron with a long ball, but the captain there, Kyle Andrews, read it out, scruffed it out. And now we have Ricardo Peltier. He's going to play Ricardo. Yes, he does. Ricardo Peltier, is he going to do something special with his speed? Tries to cut inside. But his opposite number, Remy Butler, actually came back and tackled him. And now it goes out for Kyle Pirate. Carnage Pirates have had a lot of the ball, have dominated play thus far. And Kendall to swing it in, he does. Christopher comes out, and is he going to spank it? Oh, I thought Darius John was going to. And then the follow up there by Isaiah Farrell. Yes. Darius John with it, with, the, with his hands on his face. I think he should have let the throttle go there, Darius John. He has definitely been informed this first half with two goals already. A brace. And it looks as though there have been a hit to the face to Dylan Kelly. If I'm right. Seen right from the commentary box here.
And I must mention to you, this tournament, I mean, now we in a little lull, has been a facial blow to Dylan Riley, and rightfully so, he should catch himself. And we all should allow him to because it's any head injuries, the play must be stopped. That's thanks to the GA Super Cup rules. Tournament sponsored by OCA Fashion. For all your fashion delights. I think Dylan Riley being sorted out. That's actually Tyler Lopez. Now got to saw his face there. Look at the high press from Carnage right into the Harry McKings box. And they finally got to distribute it to Lopez, but his hold up play isn't well, Lopez. Luis Rodriguez isn't too good. And that gives Carnage the ball and Ricardo Peltier on it now. The price. Now Kendall with a little bit of skill. Now to Ricardo Peltier. He swings it to Ricardo John. Is he going to reach the end of it? Now wonderful defending by Dillon. And he clears it to give Arima King some breathing space. Can't remember the last time Arima Kings has been able to get out, their, out of their half and get into the opposition's box, I should say. They really have been pinned back. For most of this full staff here, the Arima Kings. But now they got some breathing space, and now they have. Oh, he's just offside there. The number 17. Brandon Olton. I think he should have hold this run there. There was no need to rush it. There was no need to. There was a lot of space and time. And some pulls there in the Marvin Lee dancing to the rhythm section. Having some fun. Having a couple of drinks. Their team obviously will be heading 2 0 in cruise control, the Carnage Pirates. So I don't give them wrong. Also, I, I forgot to mention the first game was. Commentated by Lee, who I understand he gave me a wonderful introductory. And I thank you for that. And my street my show, he's trying to conduct something for his team, but Nothing working out. And Kendall, is he going to play Darius? Is he offside? Linesman then raises flag. I think because he didn't touch it. It goes straight to Christopher Hernandez. And Tyler Lopez tried to distribute it now. And now Brandon Olton. He has a chance to run at his defender. He swings it in. But it's straight to the goalkeeper. And I think that's the first time I've seen, or in a long time, I should say, the Arima Kings actually get the ball in the Carnage Pirates box. Hasn't seen it there much. And I'm getting it until we had one minute more to play in this first half. 
The ball currently on the left flank. And Carnage Pirates not rushing it. I don't give them wrong, they're on top, 2-0. Didn't do much wrong yet. And now Ricardo Peltier. Is he gonna use his speed? Plays that ball to no one. And Butler, Remy Butler to Isaiah. Now to set Griffith back to Isaiah. Whose half is nearly complete. Only one extra minute and the referee blows. And the first half is finished. I mean, it'll be very disappointing here for the Arima Kings. And they are 2-0 down. Karnas Pirates playing their first game in the Group B. They are two up to brace by Darius John. His quick foot ability is definitely really well. And his finishing ability is even better. But we are in the Marvel Stadium, the GA Super Cup. I don't think you should go anywhere. I think you should just go for a, 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 a probably a little snack, something to drink after this short commercial break. My name is Darren Williams, Communications Officer on behalf of Gateway Athletics International. We cordially invite you to our 2022 launch and player draft for our highly anticipated GA Super Cup 2022. As one of the two female commissioners in a traditionally male-dominated and administered sport, I would like to spend a few moments looking at two very small and simple words. Those words are hopes and dreams. This Super Cup will act as a conduit for national recruitment. Through this process, we will incorporate the development and advancement of football through Great Gateways programs as our players and teams build from inward out to become the very best. Coming into the league, I'm really excited and looking forward to playing with not only my fellow teammates, but also the past players and veterans. Being a past member of the TT Pro League, this is a good opportunity for younger players coming into this GA Super Cup, you know, to market themselves and push towards being called on, on the national team and, and being given opportunities to even go outside of Trinidad and Tobago to further their, their profession.
And we are back live here in the Marvin Lee Johnston. That's the blast for the second half. Two teams back out, ready and ready to go. Kyle Ashpiras obviously being 2 0 up over the Arima Kings. Carnage Pirates, number seven. Duncan John being the one who has put it in the back of the net, John. And they try to distribute it there, Ricardo Peltier, to their goal scorer. Just on the long side. Now, Kendall, is he going to whip it? He doesn't. It's a beautiful inside ball there. Just a bit long. I'm not on the same page here as teammates. No, Remy on it now, the right wing. He's played on the roof. Oh. That pass was a bit wayward there now. Carnage back on it. And John on it now, the goal scorer, the striker. Look at that quick feed ability with a step over. Beats one, beats two. And the linesman actually signaling. Oh, yes, it is a. Carnage Pirates threw in. We have had a substitute. The introduction for the Carnage Pirates. Number 18, Kieran Joseph coming in. Stepping on into the second half, the coach. Devon Hamlet. Be seen as side 2 0 up. I wasn't seeing much wrong to, for anyone to come off, but. He would have seen something. I don't know if it's a niggly injury. Kivon on it nevertheless. Now Kendall. Thought Kivon on it set, set Griffith. A good interceptive play. And Remy just kicked it to no one. To the disappointment to this whole Arima King side and everyone here in the Marvin Lee. Kivon on it now. First touch. He's accent back for Kivon and he gets it. Distributed it really well. That's a brilliant ball to Ricardo Peltier. Is he going to get on in it? What good interception there by the Arima Kings defense. Good reading of the play. We have overlap and run from Dylan Kelly. But again, Remy just hasn't. Been able to get his passing boots on today. Oh, my street and my show tried something a little fancy by letting the ball run through his legs. Old turn on it now. To my street and my show. Is he going to spank it? I think he should. Does hit it. Just a, a bit much, too much left kick on that. Should have redirected better onto goal. A little bit different start to the second half. Has started off a bit PAC. Has started off with a bit of a. A speedy touch to it. Everyone come down. Arima Kings especially want to wanna get a goal. Want to try to nick something back to make this interesting from the neutral point of view. And Kivon, he has come down well. And now he has played it to John, the goal scorer. Who has a brace? Is he going to swing it in? We have Peltier running in. And just at the last moment, he slipped. And... He wasn't able to generate much power on the cross and Hernandez gobble it up. Now we have Remy Butler on it. He's gonna do something fancy. One, two step overs, and easily <laughs> runs past this defender. And he plays it back. And he swings it in. This is gonna be a chance. Oh, he should have been able to get over that. There, I think it's. The number two, Seth Griffith, he went forward from all the way back. And that was just on the high side. If he was able to control that, that would have been a good chance. And 
again, Isaiah Ramnarine with the interception. He has played well, even though his side is down. He hasn't done much wrong, has been able to read the play, has been able to build the play. Isaiah. And John now on it. Is he going to give him back? He doesn't. He plays it to the number 16. And the referee spots an infringement. And that's a foul for the Carnage Pirates. I must say, Kevon. The substitute, Kyron, I should say, has come down and he has turned up the screws and he is swinging it in and now. Now John, he's on it. Is he going to spank? Is that a foul? The referee doesn't blow. I surprised he hasn't put the whistle to his mouth. To his mouth there, the referee. Kieran back on it. He's really quick. And keep on. Ky Ooh. I think that goes out for... Oh, it's not a corner kick. It's actually a goal kick. Surprisingly there. Kendall a bit frustrated with the linesman decision. Or lineswoman, I should say. My pardons. So it's wonderful to see women introduced into sport. Especially from a I know male dominated event. Whether it be players. Whether it be coaches, whether it be referees, whether it be linesmen slash women. So it's nice to see. Thanks to the GA Super Cup as well as the Referee Association for making the sport inclusive. And that's an easy clearance there by Tyler Lopez. Wonderful strength by Isaiah Farrell. Has played well. The reason why in the first half, John was able to get at the end of it and slot it in the back of the net. And now it's all the way to Dylan Kelly. And he has space and time. And again, they're not on the same page. Not on the same chapter. Arima Kings. They're probably reading different books. Oh, look at it. Quick feet here now. From Darius Sultan. And now, Remy, is he going to spark it? He should let it go. He has a man on the other side. Wow. What a last ditch tackle. That is from the number five, Kyle Andrews. And now John is on it now. Straight on the counter. He has been good. He swings it into no one. I mean, Ricardo Peltier was pelting in the box, but he wasn't fast enough to punks on that beautiful cross by John, the goal scorer. Maishi the Maishi plays it off. And Remy, again, hasn't been able to get a proper passing hasn't been able to dominate like how we know I normally see him play just isn't going well for him tonight and Curtis Newell showing his skill and Kendall is he gonna play Curtis he should have played Curtis Newell there but we didn't have the vision And now Pharrell hasn't put a step wrong. And Kyron, oh. That would have been fancy if he was able to get through with that. He has come down and showed that he could bounce it around. He could dominate the play. He could control it. Has started off really well, the young lad, Kyron.
Daniel Sylvester. Tamaron. Now to again Remy. He it just isn't going well for him today. Just isn't ticking. I think the coach should look elsewhere for that creative spark. You need to know when it's just not some of your key players' nights. And it's looking like it is not his night today. But now there's a good chance. And it's Luis Rodriguez. Is he going to get it? Oh! Wonderful come out there from the goalkeeper. Again, Remy with a hard touch, and it is just it just isn't going well for him. And Seth Griffith with a a run from deep, and Dylan Kelly plays it now to Maron. Maron switches the play all the way to Isaiah Ramirez. He has time and space, and it looks as though the Carnage Pirates is okay with defending, and the keeper comes out. He punches it. And Delano just pulled a little bit. Wasn't too high. It just was on the right hand side. If that was a little bit more on target, I would have liked to see if the keeper was going to save that. And Kelly with a head out. Wonderful head and interception there. We're just about 10 minutes into the second half. Scoreline 2-0 still to the Carnage Pirates in green. Arima Kings in yellow. If you're now joining in on our live stream here. And that's a wonderful ball to Ricardo Peltier. And it's just his first touch. His first touch wasn't telling there. Should have done a little better. The number 10 he He's always a bit more skillful than that. If you saw what he did in the first half. He's better than that. We, we know that. But it's a carnage tree nevertheless. Are they going to push for one more? I don't know if that will be the thoughts of the coach. Devon Hamlet. If you want to throw it in. If you want to get one more just to... Give them that extra knockout punch. Or they're going to settle back for the 2-0 victory. Oh, we love to see that skill there from the captain, Kyle Andrews. Arima Kings on it here now. Brandon Olton. Is he going to distribute it? He does distribute it well to Kelly. He has Remy on the flank. Oh, he does. He finally gets it to Remy, luckily. Remy swings it in. Is this? Ooh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful last ditch challenge there by David Noel. That in flight kick was so good. It, those, those things need applause. We always. Quick to celebrate goals, but that tackle there really saved them a goal, I think. Because Luis was at the end of it. Ricardo Peltier, is he going to go forward with the speed? I'd like to see him blast off there. He is really quick. He decided to keep it, and now the Rima Kings on the ball. Kelly on the right flank. He plays it on the inside. To Kyle Set Griffin. He has been. The coach has instructed them to get a little bit more forward. Set Griffith. My runner, who of course he is. I've been running up, down, left, right. Darius 
Maron, um, John has been able to get it and he's holding off his defender. Is he going to let it go? That's a save and that's 3-0. I mean, we must thank John for putting in so much effort and that's a substitute that came on. Kyron, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that Pongston. John Levy, look at the replay. Look at how much John hold off his defender. He hold off him for about, about five seconds and then he easily went past Tyler Jones and then Kyron. That was easy for him to gobble up and put it in the back of the net. Doesn't get much easier than that. It's actually the number 16, Curtis Noel. It's not Kyron. Curtis Noel was the goal scorer there. That was easy for him. I have a little difficulty seeing the players here in the commentary box. The lighting. Not very well. So I, I do apologize for calling the wrong players' names. Darius, Duncan, John has been doing really well, was the reason for two of the goals and also picking up an assist and now he's on it again here now. He isn't very fast but he's really, really, really skillful and they're just nibbling at his ankles, nibbling at his ankles, nibbling at his ankles. Swiping, swiping, swiping. Cutting grass almost. Curtis Jones and he plays it to the number four and he plays it immediately to Ricardo Peltier but Kelly read the play. The right back and he... Stefan Eve, the number four. He didn't start, but he came on and he has been playing well too. Tevon Tev 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 Eve. And Kelly on it now. To Remy, back to Kelly. The Sarima Kings need to get one back if they looking to do anything or, or even sniff anything. A consolation goal is what I'll be aiming for out of respect. I mean, we are, I, I must say, even though Ari McKings could have done a little bit better offensively. And now, uh, that basically sums up their evening. Look at that pass. Just, they're just not in the same chapter here, the Ari Kings. But like I was saying before, even though the Ari Kings haven't done much against the Carnage Pirates, they must also commend how great the Carnage Pirates is defensively. The Arima Kings haven't even been able to snuff out anything much. Having very little shots and very little possession of it. And that could only be accreditation to the Carnage defense. David Noel, Kyle Andrews and Isaiah Farrell has been brick walls in the back. Tyler Lopez just intervening. But 
now the Carnage Pirates back in possession. Andrew with the distribution to Tevon, but just a bit soft, just a bit on the short side, and the tackle by Kelly, not only was successful, but uh, was him a true in. And Maishu the Maishu. Let's see if he can do something to bring the Sarima King side forward. And there's the goalkeeper. I mean, the Makoya Tigers will be looking on at, at this game, and they could see what they, they would be up against. Adrian Romain obviously being the coach. That, that would be a game to watch most definitely, I must say. But this car on our side has been Really, really, really dominating. They, they're, they're like the queen on the chessboard playing against a pawn or a king. I've been able to snuff out all of the moves of the Arima, the Arima kings. No pun on words. And look how easy they was, they was able to come out of Danger there. Chiron, the substitute. He has also come down and manned, mandated that he get it. And has been really quick and really sharp. Ricardo Pelti acts it. I think, I think the blast of speed. Look at that. Look at that skill on Kelly. But the referee not having the foul. Now Isaiah Ramner right on it now. Is he gonna do something special? Is he gonna spark something for this Arima Kings? Is he gonna inject some energy? I think the Arima Kings, they should look on their bench to see if they could at least change something because not much working out for them. Now Remy, change of pace. And this is what I know Remy for. He swings it in. Ooh. And Kyron. Substitute has have it easy and Ricardo Peltier on the right the right flank now. And the Carnage Pirates able to easily bounce it around and keep the ball. Move it around easily. And as you heard on the commentary, on the announcer, but Batiste coming on for the number 10 penalty, I think. That quick feet ability he tried earlier, just a niggly. He asked for the, to be replaced. For the Arima Kings, we have two new players. Number nine. And number 14, Cheerez. Cheerez. 
Andreas Axel Fritz doesn't get it. And this is my shoe to my shoe, and this is what I like to see. He takes on cheese. He's gonna have a let. Oh, he cuts back inside. Is he gonna let go? He finally does. But again, the brick wall defense of the Carnage Pirates blocking the shot. And all that effort goes to no avail. It's eventually cleared now. I haven't remember the last time I called Daniel Sylvester name. That's to tell you how much. And Kendall on it now. Plays it to Chiron. I've been really magisterial since he came down here, Chiron. Someone I would definitely look forward to seeing. I surprised he hasn't started actually. He has came on and played very well. And he's back on it here now, Kyron. Got a quick pass. Is he gonna get it back here, Kyron? Oh, look, look at look at this. John has really, really, really isn't he isn't very quick. But he reminds me a bit of Benzema. And look how easy he plays. He swings it across to Curtis Jones. That's what we like to see. John lost out on it. He took on one, beat one, beat two, lost out on it, run it back, cut it back from his brute strength, swinged it into to Curtis. But we like the extra push, the extra effort shown here. I mean, they're 3-0 up, and look at the amount of intensity that he's doing. He be even scoring the brace and, and the assist. And now Remy on it now. But good defending there by Isaiah Price. Isn't running too smoothly, Isaiah Price. I don't know if you have a, something niggly. On my street now, is he going to do something special? He takes in one and he has it. Oh, oh he tried try to run. I think he should have let it go there. I think he should have pressed X. Tried to pass too much. I mean, try to beat too much, I should say. My she does have a quick foot ability. He, has, he does have that extra step on his defenders. That four-star skill. But we're about 73 minutes into play. And this is a whitewash from the car. And as it's 3-0. Third goal coming in the second half. Easily slotted away by Curtis Noel. Thanks to John. He scoring a brace and his brute strength was the reason why Curtis was able to just easily tap it into the goal when he had a shot and saved by Hernandez. The Arima Kings goalkeeper. Kendall on it now. Kyron. Kyron back on it. He has been able to come on and just distribute it around really nicely. To Andrew. All the way across to David Noel. Kyron distributes it now to Isaiah Farrell. Back to Kyron. Into the midfield. Now Curtis, look at this. This is easily, this is wonderful stuff here by Carnage. Try to trick his player there, Isaiah, but even too cunning for his own liking. The ball running out of play.
And now is this something special going to happen? He swings it in. Is he going to have a spank? Yeah. Oh, look at that sliding challenge. Look at that sliding challenge. Such a good challenge there by David Noel. Like again, we, 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 I like, I must go back to the point. I know the Arima Kings hasn't been on their A game attacking wise. But Carnage Pirates definitely has been on their A game defensively. No nonsense defense. And David Noel showed it there with, with such a crunching slide and challenge. He does eventually hit it, but I think the referee spotted. And is it an offside? If we're just trying to calm down some of the Arima Kings players, I think they're frustrated because one, they're 3 0 down, and two, it's, they probably see when as though the Carnage Pirates is wasting some time. But I understand their frustration because it just hasn't gone well. The football and gods hasn't been on their side tonight. As if you believe in luck, that is. Oh, that's a wonderful driven blast. He's going to play the true ball now, Kendall. He takes his time. I mean, there's no need to rush. They're training up. They could bounce it around. They could have some fun to the bounce to the rhythm section as the rhythm section looking to spark some interest. And is that offside? Yes, it is. I think that's a lineswoman, Prudence Fleming. Oh, that's actually Noel Moore. Prudence Fleming, the lineswoman there. Now, Chiron, look at that. And he plays it to John. Is he going to do something? He has had that special oh, cut back there. Fan step over. <laughs> Eventually, good defending by Remy. Darius, I mean, John will, will be looking for his hat trick. And that's calm play by the goalkeeper. Now, Curtis. To Noel. But Olton eventually gets it. And now he plays it to the Maishi. The Maishi has it now. Oh, he lost out on it. And that'll be to his annoyance. Actually goes back again to the Arima Kings. And he has Maron. He actually swings it all the way across to the left flank. He's going to swing it in. He takes on his lad. I think he should have had a shot there. Ah, that was really brilliant from Kyron. Gets it back. Is he going to get back the 1-2 again? Kyron. And now he has time on space. It's 3 versus 2. He just missed it one time. He's onside. That's not off. So. Oh. One was really close. I'm surprised Fleming called that one lines woman. That one was tight for me. Kester Williams coming on for Kendall. Kendall has played well, Kendall Baptiste. And Kester on it now. On it now. And Kyron has. Really come on and show this ability. He plays along the Shibushan to John. 
But Remy throttles back and uh, has to be a foul. That's a mistake. And now is it? Is he gonna cut inside? Is he gonna have the shot? He should let it go. No, he... He did a bit too much there. I think his better option was to let to let the throttle go, have a shot, test the keeper. You never know what to expect. If you don't write your name down for the raffle, you will never win. This is on it. Is he going to give it to Johnny? Has a shot one time. John asking for it. He's John definitely wants his hat trick. I, I want to see him put three in the back of the net as well. I think that will be the first GA Super Cup hat trick. Just about eight minutes left of regular time to play. Carnage having more shot, having more possession, having more everything. Having more goals as well. Three that is. With a brace from John. And run from Curtis Noel. I my kings haven't really done much today. Haven't really ticked like they normally do. Must say they played better against the McCoy Tigers. They just didn't go their way today. The likes of Remy Butler really struggled to get a hold of the ball and really bounce it around like I normally see him do. And Maishi the Maishu, he, he's try and try and try, but I think he need more support in the cast. If he wants or he on the side to see any anything come out of this. And, and that's not just this game, but out of their group that is. Group B. And Kyron on it now. He plays it to Keston. Keston to Curtis and Curtis is Using his speed and he's been pulled back and the referee gives him a foul rightly so. I think the Dylan Kelly has went over as well. Because it looks as though he has been slapped into the face from Curtis. Referee coming across just to see what's up. And he actually goes across the the Fleming and I don't know if a card is going to be dished out here. Medics are being called. Looks very messy. This 
this definitely Johnson is a no nonsense referee, Johnson Thomas. Isn't allowing any other players to put any nonsense into his ears. That's a yellow card there for Christopher Hernandez. It's a red card actually for Christopher Hernandez. I think that's the end of Hernandez really. At the end of the day, he's been talking to the referee over and over. I mean, I think the captain is... I think he should be given that ability to have a conversation with the referee, but... Johnson Thomas, no nonsense referee, having none of that. And given, he's been given the marching orders. Things have gone from bad to worse here for the Arima Kings. And now they are seeing their captain being dismissed off the pitch. I mean, he saw his player bleeding from head. And he went to course, I probably asked the referee, what's up? And he has been given marching orders. I think it's a bit unfair, but we don't know what he said. Been dished out the yellow card and then been dished out the, the red card. One after succession. We haven't had any drama, but no, any, I, I would use the Trinidad term, back and all in this game. But he have been given marching orders here, Christopher Hernandez. I know it's not a word, but things have gone from worse to worser to worsest here for the Arima Kings. I don't know how they're going to shuffle around their defense to accommodate for a missing goalkeeper. And they're going to have to bring or take off one of their infield players and bring on the goalkeeper. But because all of their substitutions have been used up, they're going to play a man down. They're going to have to use one of their existing players in the field to now goalkeep. I mean, it's in the 80th minute, so they don't have much long to... They'll have to hold off this downfall, but definitely disappointing to see your captain off for the next game, being dished out a red card. And Remy on it now. To Olson. Olson now to Maestri, the Maestro. To Kelly. And oh, just a bit on the long side. There. Should have waited the pass a little bit better. And Kyron in it now. Plays it to Keston. Keston to Curtis. And yes, the uh, second half is. Regular time is finished. I don't know if you're hearing from the announcements, but the two teams have been awarded three minutes for extra time. I guess it's for the infringement with the, 
where the player was lashed in the face and he needed some medical treatment. The referee, seeing that David Noel, uh, I mean David Noel, Kyle Andrews was all over that ball. You can't, you can't sit on it when you're on the ground. And he awarded a free kick here for Harry McKings and my street. He's over it. Could he get some a consolation goal here for the Harry McKings? Could he at least test? The Caribbean Car um, Carnage Pirates goalkeeper. And he has a spark. Keeper actually, that was a very unorthodox save by the goalkeeper. It looked like he used his foot to hit it up and then save it there. And that's the blast of the final whistle. And that's the end of the game there. Ariba Kings versus Carnage Pirates. Three to the Pirates. Two goals from John and one from Curtis Jones. I think if I was to pick a player, the man of the match for me would definitely be John, Duncan John. He has played really well. He has dominated the game. Not only scoring two, but assisting Curtis Jones with a shot that was saved. And then Curtis Jones pounced on it. But we've been sponsored by OCO and Mario Pizzas tonight. And obviously the, the Gateway Athletics given the so a lot of Trinidad footballers a chance. Yeah. In the Marvin Lee. My name is Renrin Medina. And it's really been a pleasure with in the Marvin Lee. We have a don't go anywhere, anyone in the Marvin Lee Stadium. We have an after party. So I would stick around. But it's been an entertainment set of football here today. But at a part of the whole ja production team thank you for watching the ja supercup.com the live stream we have more games next week so don't go anywhere we'll be back here in the marvel stadium to entertain you more my name is Renamine. Mean, it's been a pleasure serving you here today everyone in the the stream link it's been a pleasure commentating for you. Have a good night. So good night and welcome to the post-match presentation. I'm here with the head coach of the Arima Kings. Um, we're going to have a word with him after his team's defeat. Good night and welcome, coach. Oh, thanks, man. It's been a credit performance, but you're on the losing side or the wrong end of the, um, the cookie. Tell me how, what your team could have done different this afternoon. Well, first of all, the guys could have come out a little more feisty. You know, right? They started the game very slow. I think they give the opponent a, a lot of respect that, that they don't deserve. You, know, right? you could have seen the change of the game coming in the second half. That is the intensity that they were supposed to come out with in the first half. Man. All right, so I've been mean, seeing that it's a lackluster performance. You guys ran McCoy Tigers to the ground in your first game, coming off a hard fought victory. Um, how is that in the mood in the camp? Two consecutive loss, losses. How, tell me, how, you know, what's the motivational speech going in from here on in? Well, the butterfly is supposed to leave by that time now because it's two games that they experience. 
there's a young team that I have. None of them never played any pro league, super league, um, uh, youth pro league or anything. The experience is kind of low. But here is where they're going and get the experience. And when lose or draw, they have to play. And I know for sure, if they give me the best, everybody will get to see. All right, you know, as the saying goes, um, out of every, as a lotus, you out of dark, you rise out of dark waters. So I guess this could be the Cinderella story moving forward. Any, can we expect any changes, any revamping what's moving forward in the Arima Kings camp? I ain't going to change my guys for nothing. Boy. They just have to come to the party and dance. Italian. Thanks again and wish you all the best. So moving along, we are now inviting the victorious coach of the Par um, Carnage, Carnage Pirate. Good night and welcome. Hi, uh, good night. So your team got off to a winning start. Um, let's first and foremost touch on the atmosphere at the ballpark here and being part and parcel of the GA Super Cup. Uh, well, I can say the GA Super Cup is doing a pretty good job in getting teams to come together as the football now open back in the country. And uh, the team, we're doing fine at the moment. We have some players that still need to come in to add a bit more to the team and to the player of the which we would like to play. But other than that, everything is all right. All right, so um, the wood on the ground, I, I'm one I like to, you know, to tackle some below the belt and blues, as we say. The wood on the ground is that your team is being referred to as the retirees. There's a lot of good players, but a retiree. Um, give us a little, I mean, experience be told talk any day, as the saying goes. So give us a little insight on your team, the makeup make of your team. Uh, well, we didn't decide to go um, with just experienced players. It happened by choice. Uh, due to the other leagues, we couldn't get the younger players to come out because they're already playing in leagues. So with the players that we have, they are the ones that are available, and we're going to go through the tournament with them, experience, all, and yeah, we're going to win 100,000 of them as well. So with that being said, and you know, experience and everything, you, your experience campaigners came out and operated as a well-oiled unit today and had a comprehensive 3-0 victory over the Arima Kings. Give us a little insight in that, and moving forward, as what are your plans? Other than winning this 100,000, how are we going to go about it at one step at a time? Uh, well, the team that you see play today, they have been playing together for quite some time. Uh, they're old, but they have been doing it since they're young. Uh, every one of them know each other. We just brought in a couple of players from outside to help with the numbers and to help boost the team as well. Uh, going forward, we have a couple more uh, old, experienced players to add. Uh, that I think they're going to do pretty well as well. And when we all come together and game by game, you will see improvement. The experience will will be there, the fitness will grow, and you will see the ball moving a lot more. All right, well, I want to say thanks, but as the saying goes, a, a good working old thing is better than a new thing, right, for sure. So we want to continue to wish you the best for your team and all the best in your future endeavors as the current Nash Pirates coach. So there you have it, guys. Um, the two coaches participating in, in the stellar event this afternoon. We want to remind you guys to stay on for the after party and join us back tomorrow for our doubleheader right here at the ballpark.